to show you how to get a encrypted connection from you to the open SSH server. Now right here this computer is running the open SSH server on top of SideWin in Windows 7. Now you can do this remotely as long as you can log in, but since we're on the same machine you have access to it, it's a lot 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 easier. Now how this works is you need to create a key pair, which is a public key and a private key. So the server, OpenSSH server, has a public and private key, and I have a public and private key. Each other swap public keys. They give each other um, the um, public key so they can encrypt information. You can only use the public key to encrypt information, and whoever has that paired private key can only decrypt it. So that's how that works. So anyways, in order to do this, create this key pair, we're first going to need to download PuTTY to connect our OpenSSH server and PuTTY Gen. Now we're not going to use PuTTY Gen to create the keys because in the OpenSSH server, when you put this public key in the authorized key file that we're going to create later on, it'll just flare up in air because the way it's formatted, written out, it doesn't recognize it. So, once you got those two downloaded, I'll provide links in the show notes for where to download it from. You're going to open up your terminal, and you always want to run it as administrator. Also, another thing to note, that in your C drive, SideJoin folder, home, and your Windows username, whatever it may be, is your home directory for your terminal and your OpenSSH server. So, that's really nice. It's just all right here. So anyways, what we need to do is we're going to need to create this key pair for me. The server already has its key pair. So in order to do that, we're going to run here SSH TAC keygen space TAC T for the type. There's RSA and DSA. Um, you can pick whatever is your favorite. Either way, either one will encrypt your information. Um, I just like using RSA, but either way, um, both of them are good. So it's going to create them, and you're just going to name the file, and I'll just put it as 123. And it'll name the public and private key for me as 123. And you can enter in a passphrase. This will encrypt all of your, uh, encrypt your private key so nobody can connect to your server without this passphrase. But for the simplicity of this tutorial, I'm just going to skip over that. Just click Enter. Okay, and there we go. And it'll generate a key fingerprint for you, so you can see that right there. So next, we're going to ls, and you can see is 123 is our private key, and 123.pub is our public key. You can also see in our home directory, in the SideJoin folder under the C drive, you can see right there it is, the 123 and the 123.pub. So what we're going to do is we're going to cd into a dot ssh folder right in here and we're going to ls you'll see a file called known host if you don't have anything in there you need to create the known underscore host file and um, but what we need here is the authorized underscore keys file which will put our public key that we just generated into that for the server so it can know what public key encryption it can send it back to us It authenticates us and encrypts my traffic to and fro like I said we give each other the public keys and then we encrypt with the public keys and only the associated private key with that it's mathematically related to decrypt that information so anyways we're going to use the Linux command touch to create the file and we're going to name it authorized underscore keys And if we do ls, you'll see the authorized underscore keys file. So we're just going to do cd dot dot to go back. And we're going to ls again. And you'll see that 123 and the 123.pub. We're going to take that 123.pub and put it in our authorized key files. So we're just going to cat the 123.pub. And then two right arrow signs. It's a, above your period on a USA keyboard space dot SSH where that authorized key files at forward slash 
authorize underscore key file and it'll append that uh, key into there and it successfully put it in there we can also cat deauthorize underscore key file and we'll see that there's no such file or directory hang on one second oh sorry about that we're going to have to go into that directory so cd dot ssh and ls and we're going to cat the authorized underscore keys file and you can see there is my public key so we're going to do cd and if you don't know where to go back exactly you can use the tilde sign right here to right to the left of your keyboard right here and it'll take you back to the home directory right there if you don't know how to get back so now that we got that um, public my public key in the authorized underscore keys file we're going to just go back into the dot ssh folder and ch mod and we're going to put 600 for the correct permissions on the authorized key file and it correct permissions on it now that we've got that on there we can just go into our home directory for the sidewin terminal here which is the same for the open ssh server and we're just going to copy out the public and private key that i created and we're just going to put it right next to our putty and putty gen since we've already got that set up so now we're going to open up putty gen and we're going to take that private key that one two three and we go we are going to change it into a format that putty can recognize so we're just going to load and we are going to go to all files because you won't be able to see it and click one and make sure you select one two three is your private key file and it'll say successfully imported now you can put a key comment on here if you want i'll just put um uh, server open ssh server one you can name it whatever you want this is the comment you'll see when you log in to your server here you can also enter in the passphrase for uh to encrypt your private key um just for the simplicity of this video i'm just going to leave it as it is without any passphrase we're just going to click yes on save the private key and we're just going to name it one two three putty or whatever you want to name it so now that we've got that there we're going to open up putty to connect to our open ssh server that's running on this computer now, like i said you could do this remotely but you'd have to scp back and forth and it just adds to the already complicated method of getting this up and running so since i'm on the computer like i said this computer is running open ssh server i'm just going to connect to the loopback address 127.0.0.1 to connect to my own computer here and under the SSH, we're going to see the auth. Now, right here, you're gonna it's gonna say private key for authentication. You're gonna click browse, and you're gonna find that converted private key right there. So we're gonna click on that and we're going to click open. And it'll flare up with an error because this is the first time you connect to it, because the um RSA fingerprint is not in your known host file on um uh, the computer you're connecting to. So just click yes, don't worry about this, and you're going to log in as your Windows username, whatever your account is. And it should authenticate. You can see our open SSH comment, and there we go. We are having a encrypted connection to my open SSH server to and fro. So anything that goes between me and the server or anything is encrypted. You can see it is up and running. And also, one last thing that you need to do is you just go ahead and need to delete, delete these because it's not necessary. So there you go. That's how to create an encrypted connection to your open SSH, open SSH server with a public key encryption. If you like this video, you can comment, rate, subscribe, and I'll see you later.